Tahuti, also called Tahuti, or Thoth, was the Egyptian god of wisdom, writing, magic, sciences, math, and measuring time. Tahuti was a lunar deity, and often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis bird, or as a baboon. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Tahuti is credited as the inventor of writing. Tahuti's wives were the ancient Egyptian goddesses Ma Ad and Seshat. The East African country of Djibouti is named after Tahuti and means land of Tahuti. As a lunar deity, Tahuti was combined with Aya as a moon god called Aya Tahuti. As Tahuti was associated with writing and with the moon, it is perhaps unsurprising that he was also linked to the creation of the calendar. Similarly, he was considered to measure and record time. The ancient Egyptians initially used a purely lunar calendar prior to the establishment of the solar civil calendar. On the ancient Egyptian lunar calendar, each month began on the morning when the waning crescent moon could no longer be seen. After the establishment of the 365-day solar civil calendar, the lunar calendar continued to be used to mark religious holidays and events. The observed cycles of the moon organized much of the ancient Egyptian society's religious rituals. The lunar calendar divided the month into four weeks, reflecting each quarter of the lunar phases. The days of the lunar month were named after stages in the life of the moon god Jehudi. The Egyptian lunar calendar consisted of 12 months whose duration differed according to the length of a full lunar cycle, between 29 or 30 days. Each lunar month began with the new moon, reckoned from the first morning after the waning crescent had become invisible, since the lunar calendar was 10 or 11 days shorter than the solar year, a 13th month called Jehudi was intercalated every several years to keep the lunar calendar in rough correspondence with the agricultural seasons. Jehudi's chief temple was located in the city of Kameno, meaning city of eight where he led the Ogdid, a pantheon of eight principal deities, four males and four females. The Ogdid were primordial deities in the ancient Egyptian cosmology. Since modern science recognizes eight distinct phases of the moon, separated into two phases of waxing and waning, then another application of the symbolism of the Ogdid to the lunar deity Jehudi is to represent the eight phases of the moon, with the male and female symbolism, representing the waxing and waning phases respectively. The eight phases of the moon are, number one, the new moon, this is the invisible phase of the moon, with the illuminated side of the moon facing the sun and the night side facing earth. This is when the moon appears completely dark from earth. Number 2. The Waxing Crescent This silver sliver of a moon occurs when the illuminated half of the moon faces mostly away from earth, with only a tiny portion visible to us from our planet. It grows daily as the moon's orbit carries the moon's day side farther into view. This phase lasts while the moon is lit between 1 and 50%. Number 3. The first quarter moon. At this point the moon is now a quarter of the way through its monthly journey. This is when the moon appears half illuminated and half shaded. Number 4. Waxing gibbous. At this point, most of the moon appears illuminated, and the moon appears brighter in the sky. This phase lasts while the moon is lit between 51 to 99%. Number 5. Full moon. At this point the entire moon is lit. This is the sun's illumination of the entire day side of the moon. The moon is opposite the sun, as viewed from Earth, revealing the moon's day side. At this point, the moon is half of the way through its monthly journey. Number 6. Waning Gibbous. At this point, the moon begins its journey back toward the sun. The opposite side of the moon now reflects the moon's light. The illuminated side of the moon appears to shrink from 99% to 51% lit. Number 7. The last quarter moon. At this point the moon is now three quarters of the way through its monthly journey. This is when the moon appears with the other half illuminated, and the other half shaded from the perspective of Earth. And lastly, number 8. The waning crescent moon. The moon is making its way back to the point in its orbit, where its day side directly faces the sun, and from the perspective of Earth. Earth, the moon appears to be decreasing in illumination from 50% to 1%, until it appears as a silver sliver crescent moon. There are interesting parallels between the ancient Egyptian moon god Jehudi to the modern religion of Islam. First, one of the symbols of Jehudi is the crescent moon, and one of the symbols of the religion of Islam is the crescent moon. Next, the ancient Egyptian word for the moon is Aya, and the Arabic word for God is Allah, from which the word Allah is derived. Next, Jehudi presided over the ancient Egyptian lunar calendar used for religious purposes, and the religion of Islam also uses a lunar calendar. The ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar is Ramadan, and this is the month when the Islamic prophet Muhammad received the first revelation of the Quran. 
which said, Read in the name of your Lord who created humans from a clot. Read, and your Lord is most generous. He who taught by the pan, taught man what he knew not. And coincidentally, in ancient Egypt, Dahuti was the deity who taught man by the pen.